Hare Krishna. The situation in Bangladesh is becoming increasingly grave with the minorities, especially the Hindus being threatened by the radical elements who have gained increasing power with the government not really doing much to protect the minorities and especially with ISKCON being accused of being a terrorist organization and uh, Chinmay Krishnadas being arrested. Oh, this can be very and it is very disturbing and distressing. So how do we look at it and what can we do about it? I'll talk about this from four distinct perspectives the philosophical, geopolitical, institutional and individual. From a philosophical perspective, <clears throat> I'll make three points. The first is associated with dharma and politics. Many times when such troubles come up, uh, some people may say, oh, all this is politics, I don't want to get involved in it. Well, it depends on what we mean by the word politics. The word politics has a neutral functional meaning where the implication is politics refers to the system or the art or the science of governance and politics also refers to the many questionable or even reprehensible means used to attain the power of governance or to retain that power so in the second sense it is quite it has a negative sense backbiting rumor mongering character assassination uh, groupism and all those things so don't do politics and somebody says that often refers to this kind of politicking tendency. Now this is something those who want to go on the spiritual path need to be careful about avoiding. However, politics in the sense of the system of governance is of central importance to everyone. We may not be interested in politics, but politics is interested in us. The kind of government that is there, the kind of taxes that they impose, the kind of wars that they get into, the way they make policies which may be biased for or against certain groups of people, all these matter. And therefore, for a person to say that, okay, I'm not in, 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 involved in politics, well, that may be a personal preference, but from a philosophical perspective, Krishna is not uninvolved in politics. In fact, when he comes down to the earth, his purpose is at one level to bring about order in society. Dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. So this dharma which Krishna is referring to is social order. This dharma is not religion. It is definitely not theocracy. That is something which is a matter of shraddha, a matter of bhakti. And that is different. So the word dharma, when Krishna says, I come to establish dharma, he is not forcing everyone to become his devotee. On the Pandava side, there was Drupada, who was a Shaivite by his uh, family deity and family worship. And he remained a Shaivite, although he was fighting on the side of the Pandavas. On the side of the Kauravas, there were people like Bhishma and Bhurishrava who were Vaishnavas. So the point is that maintaining order in society is a vital function of politics. And in that sense, what kind of government is there that is has to be a concern of every human being, irrespective of whether they are spiritual or not. Now, of course, if the government is conducive to spiritual and devotional growth, that is good. Krishna talks about that in 4.9 and 10, but that is voluntary and inspirational. The law and order is something which is established that, and enforced when necessary. So, what are the threats that may be have to be countered for the establishment of dharma? In today's world, one major threat is radicalism. Now, radicalism or extremism can be understood in the context of the Bhagavad Gita as knowledge in the mode of ignorance, 1822. kam. So, take one thing and make it into everything. That is deadly. Why deadly? So, we reduce a huge complex problem 
to just one tiny issue and then if the person works only on that feverishly and ah hai to come without thinking proper cause and effect atatvarthavat without think, seeing the whole picture alpam ch having a meager vision so in radicalism a person is reduced to one attribute now radicalism can be based on different kinds of ideology sometimes it can be religious sometimes it can be secular so for example marxism especially as it was enforced in soviet russia and china was extremely radical and people were reduced to just one feature if they are unfaithful to the state no matter how intelligent how much prosperous how much wealth creator they might be how they will be destroyed so radicalism is the enemy of humanity it can come through a secular ideology it can come through a religious ideology and when it starts destroying people's first their basic human sensitivity then human decency then humanity itself then what happens they start dehumanizing everyone who does not agree with them that, and that kind of radicalism is what the government needs to stop needs to prevent and dharma establishing dharma at one level means fighting against this kind of radicalism now that radicalism can be associated with a particular religion it can be associated without any religious ideology but wherever it comes the attack on radicalism is meant for the protection of humanity because radicals may initially target people of other religions then they may start tar targeting people of their own religion if their interpretation of that religion is slightly different from their own so the bhagavatam also talks about how shraddha can be in the three modes in the teachings of kapila and there it is said that when shraddha gets joined with tamas then the result is that the people whose faith is in the mode of ignorance they start becoming separatist then they become intolerant then they become violent so this is a downward trajectory and this kind of the marriage of faith with with the mode of ignorance is what leads to fanaticism extremism radicalism and this needs to be stopped this kind of faith becomes disruptive and destructive faith in the mode of goodness is actually cooperative and helps maintain harmony at the material level while people pursue spiritual growth at an individual level so shraddha is meant to be individual and the state should not interfere with it the state should prevent any one group from imposing especially at the level of intolerance and violence on other groups so secularism to the extent it involves maintaining basic order of dharma and allowing shraddha to be practiced in an intolerant in a tolerant way that is fair enough but sometimes when there is theocracy it can be dangerous because one religious world you gets imposed but anyway the point we are making over here is that one duty of establishing dharma is preventing radicalism especially in today's context and this cannot be dismissed as oh, it's just politics it will hurt us and it can hurt anyone and everyone over here so the third point is that we may think does god take care does god protect well yes god does protect but god often protects through human agents and it is that we shouldn't expect that god will do what we are meant to do we humans have to use our intelligence to do our best and then god will do the rest so krishna helped arjuna in the battle of kurukshetra but it was on the day when he had to kill jayadrath arjuna had to exert himself to his fullest capacity and then krishna intervened to so that arjuna could attain the final victory krishna spoke the entire bhagavad gita so that arjuna would take responsibility so expecting god to do what we can and should be doing that is not devotion that is irresponsibility so from the philosophical perspective we need to take responsibility to establish dharma in the context by countering fanaticism or radicalism so now that brings us from that very broad perspective of philosophy to the current reality let's come to the geopolitical perspective so 
India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, all of these were a part of India not long, so long ago. Now, ethnically, there are remarkable similarities between the groups of people. Most of the people who are Muslims today were originally Hindus who got converted many times by force and the threat of being killed. But whatever it is, there are similar, significant ethnic similarities. And now, in today's world, the, the radicalism in Bangladesh has portrayed as if those who are devotees there, Krishna devotees, Iskand devotees, they are against Bangladesh. And because they are following a religion, which is a majority religion in India and not a majority religion in Bangladesh. However, this reducing people to this one attribute, their faith is one aspect of their life. But ethnically, they are Bangladeshis and they will be Bangladeshis. In fact, before Bangladesh was created, Pakistan targeted what was then East Pakistan because they looked down upon them because these people were Muslims, majority, but they were ethnically different. So that same mentality of looking down on people by reducing them only to one attribute is that's what unfortunately we carried out. And uh, India, which had helped the Bangladesh enormously at the time of getting independence, is now finding that the current Bangladesh government uh, is largely remaining neutral or passive rather, while radical elements are running wild. So now, now how did this whole destabilization happen? Bangladesh is in a volatile space. There is, there is a strong indication that the American deep state was involved and with the government changing over there and with even Trump tweeting concerns about what is happening in Bangladesh with, with Hindus or Hindu sympathizers like Vivek Ramaswamy and Tulsi Gabbard likely to come to power. The, this may well be a last ditch feverish effort to try to target and torment and persecute the minorities before the American government changes and starts exerting greater pressure. So we don't know what is happening at the geopolitical level. Uh, Bangladesh is very close to what is the chicken's wing of India, uh, chicken's neck, where the Siliguri corridor where China has very great interest so that it can grab onto the northeast. So the Indian government also ha has to act with great discretion and caution. So Bangladesh is something which China is interested in, Pakistan of course is interested in, America is interested in. So sometimes when these great power rivalries happen, certain groups become caught in the crossfire unfortunately. And uh, geopolitically India's influence is slowly rising, but it has not risen sufficiently that India can actually exert a substantial amount of weight or force on other countries, even its immediate neighbors. So we may feel that is the Indian government doing enough? Why is it not doing enough? Now, this is supposed to be a government supportive of dharma. Why is it not doing enough? But when some actions are being done, which don't seem to make sense to us, at that time, we have different options about how we will see them. No, the incomprehensible action, the worst motive can be given is, is malevolence. Then we have malice. You actually want to hurt others. The other is it could be incompetence or you are just not good enough to play this game to with a high stakes game that politics is or it could be ignorance you don't know what is going on over there now there could be a fourth possibility that is ignorance on our own part that how complex the situation and what all is being done we may not know that now government because of national security reasons sometimes does not reveal many things but what is happening behind the scenes may eventually be seen in results uh, in due course of time. So we may need to be patient and not rush to judgment. Although, of course, seeing the suffering that is going on over there, it is difficult to be patient. Uh, however, the incrementally great successes have been done and the uh, building of the Ram Temple is one vivid demonstration of the incremental approach without any radical revolution leading to a significant landmark change. So 
we can pray and hope that something similar happens through geo geopolitical influence of India on its neighbor. And third level at the institutional level, you know, ISKCON is relatively not a very large organization. Although we have uh, members all over the world and it is a respected organization. But in Bangladesh, we are vulnerable over there. So how exactly can the devotees be protected in that particular situation is very difficult to decide. In the complexity of real life, which action will lead to what result may be very difficult to discern. So now, uh, the fact that Chinmay Krishnadas was arrested is very disturbing. And the perception that he was disowned by Iskon after he was arrested uh, is receiving a lot of condemnation, but that's a misperception. He's not been disowned. He, his rights are respected and we have also at official level communicated that his rights to practice and share in the uh, for protection of the minorities are definitely respected. He is not presently res representing ISKCON in the official capacity. That is not disowning. That is just acknowledging a statement of his relationship with the movement. But certainly, uh, he and all the minorities there need to be protected. So at an institutional level, the movement has to consider that we have a significant number of devotees there and we don't want them to be targeted. So what moves are being taken and why they are being taken, it is difficult to uh, uh, understand. And what is right and what is wrong, sometimes in these kind of volatile situations, it will be revealed only with time. So rather than rushing to judgment about what the institution is doing or not doing, we can focus more on the last and individual level. That is, now what should, what can we as individuals do that depends on our position and our disposition. In terms of our position, we are followers of Sanatan Dharma, we are practitioners of Hinduism, of a particular tradition within Hinduism. Now sometimes we may wonder, are we Hindus, are we not Hindus? That is that conception that has been there in Iskcon's history. At a Paramarthic level, yes, we are devotees of Krishna and that is the eternal universal principle. At the same time, at a Vyavaharic level, at a practical level, at a non-transcendental functional level, we will be identified within a particular religious group in the world and that will be Hindus. We may say we are not Hindus, but if radicals target us, they will see us as Hindus. In fact, they will see us highly as highly visible Hindus because of various external markings that we often have. So, we need to acknowledge our belonging to a particular group and when, in this case Hinduism, Sanatan Dharma, and when those who are followers of similar practitioners, followers of the same tradition, are being persecuted, we, it is a matter of concern for us. Now specifically, ISKCON as an institution may or may not take a particular position on, on this issue, but that does not mean that those who are members of ISKCON cannot take positions. They cannot take positions as members or spokesperson of ISKCON. But they can at an individual level take positions appropriately. Now, without making provocative statement that may endanger the entire community of devotees. Uh, so that now will should what can individual ISKCON devotees do? That depends on the disposition. Some devotees may have a lot of emotions and concern invested in this cause and some devotees may not be that invested. So the range of response within a transcendental philosophical perspective could go from equanimity to empathy. Equanimity means steadiness like Krishna talks about in 256 that don't be agitated by the world's ups and downs. One may think that Okay, these things happen and we shouldn't get too disturbed. And yes, getting too disturbed about anything is uh, not healthy because the world is filled with disturbing situations. At the same time, equanimity is not apathy. It is not becoming heartless and uh, digging one's uh, head into a, into a ground like a ostrich and not seeing the reality. It is rather by becoming aware that is a higher reality beyond whatever the chaos is happening at the material level there is a spiritual reality. By connecting ourselves with that spiritual reality through our sadhana, through our swadhyaya, 
थोड़ा सत्संग वी कैन एटलीस्ट आवर सेल्स बी पीसफुल अदरवाइज आवर एजुटेशन विल एंड अप मेकिंग अज अ पार्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम रादर देन द पार्ट ऑफ द सोल्यूशन न बियॉन्ड इक्वैनिमिटी देर कुड बी एम्पथी कृष्णा डॉक्स अवर एम्पथी इन सिक्स पॉइंट थर्टी टू वेन ई स्टेट्स दैट द ग्रेटेस्ट योगीज सी द इक्वैलिटी ऑफ ऑल लिविंग बींग्स इन दर हैपीनेस एंड डिस्ट्रेस सो इफ समबडी इज बींग थ्रेट एंड समबडी इज बींग टॉर्चर्ड somebody is being exterminated and they are human beings like us they are followers of sanatan dharma and of bhakti like us so we need to feel what they are feeling and that is a sign that empathy is a sign of our spirituality so those who feel strongly empathic can act at various levels now there could be protest marches and rallies there could be social media posts and there could be comments on social media basically political pressure can and need to be exerted and how much of a change that will bring about how soon of a change that will bring about that is not in our control for us to do is to do our part and when we do our part then krishna in his time will do his part so certainly there is concern for all of us and that concern needs to be expressed at an individual level in an appropriate way so for us to conclude at this particular point krishna does say in the bhagavad gita that this world is a place of distress we don't often have ideal situations and sometimes the choices that we have to make are not between a good choice and a bad choice it's choice there are two choices both of which may not be unsatisfactory but we may have to make the best among those unsatisfactory choices so we don't have the choice most of us to do something that is going to bring a dramatic positive change in what is happening in bangladesh but at our level we can decide what is the choice that we can best make is it equanimity is it empathy and Even if we are equ- having equanimity, at least we can offer our prayers. That can be our part of the endeavor. Uh, some of us may want to endeavor to offer our prayers. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us may want to endeavor more tangibly or practically. Some of us and that protection in today's world may be against from radicalism and that is our human responsibility we can't wait for god to protect we god often wants us to do what we can to do our part and then he will do his part from a geopolitical perspective we discussed about the volatility of the situation and how often changes constructively for the protection of dharma have happened incrementally and not uh, through radical like a uh, regression or overreaction or knee jerk reactions then at an institutional level we discuss that there are multiple concerns of protect standing by one devotee or protecting the larger community of devotees and rather than assuming that certain decisions which they when they don't make sense they are they are out of incompetence or uh, ap- malevolence we can say that maybe we don't know let's wait and watch and see how things work out and at the individual level based on our position and our disposition we can have a response that may range from equanimity through grounding ourselves in our spirituality and offering prayers or to empathy wherein we not only invest our emotions but also invest our actions through for in exerting political pressure by which uh, when the tangible change can happen in due course of time thank you very much hare krishna